tidings, ladies and gentlemen of the Lodge, and welcome back. Today we are talking Kingdom Hearts, we are talking Castle Oblivion, we are talking Mar Lucia, or perhaps these days, Lorium. Anyway, seeing as before he was a member of the organization, he was also a dandelion. Needless to say, Mar Lucia seems like the kind of guy who is on everyone's radar, regardless of the time period. Anyway, lately I've been giving the character some more thought and couldn't help but find myself thinking of what exactly got him the job as the head of Castle Oblivion in Chain of Memories. Being a final boss in a Kingdom Hearts game is no small honor, and who would have thought his importance in Chain of Memories would be reflected in both the past and future of the series? Needless to say, with Strelizio roaming around in Quadratum, the odds of Marluxia playing a large role in the future seem to be quite likely. But let's circle back now to his past, primarily his time spent in Castle Oblivion, and why he specifically was chosen for it, and who in particular selected him. Let's get into it. So this all started when I took a look at Marluxia's character file. There were a few things within this file that stood out to me, and thus I fell down the rabbit hole resulting in this video. But allow me to point out a few things here that tip me off. Starting with this quote, I, with no memories, became Lord of Castle Oblivion. I wonder if someone planned that, but who? Well, at this point, I suppose it doesn't matter. The next quote, perhaps my heart was my guiding key. And the last quote, if there were someone who could see everything in this world, Maybe this was even the future they would have predicted. But I could never accept a future like that. I didn't accept a future like that. Maybe that's why I became a nobody. Or maybe no. Again, all these quotes in many different ways could either be pointing to the Master of Masters or Master Xehanort. I want to get into more detail about this, but I'm going to save that for the end of the video. Before we get there, I do want to flesh out exactly why either the Master or Master Xehanort selected Marluxia specifically for this job. So let's carry on now. Let's begin with some of the more obvious reasons he was selected, and one of them being that memory is a key aspect to Marluxia and Lorium's character. Seeing as their memories of being a dandelion and his sister Strelitzia are absent from his mind, it creates a very interesting irony that the man at the head of Castle Oblivion, a place where Sora and Ko's memories were stripped away from him, that he himself has had his memories stripped away from him as well. The harmful act he is committing on Sora is one that has already been committed on him. On top of that, let us also recall that Castle Oblivion is also where Aqua hid Ventus. So unknowingly to Marluxia and Lorium, seeing as he forgot, his fellow Dandelion is being hidden right under his nose. And not just any Dandelion, but one that is heavily involved with his sister Strelitzia's disappearance. Another point that I would want to bring up for why he was chosen would simply be that he was a former Dandelion. Dandelion being a position of leadership. So in that funny way, whether it be the Master of Masters or Master Xehanort, having the knowledge of him being selected as a Dandelion in a sense kind of proves that he has the qualities it takes to lead. Then we have the fact that every single time Sora and Marluxia interacted in Castle Oblivion, it was in effect a second-hand reunion between Lorium and Ventus. Shades of the Dandelions. So, between the thematic overlap of memory and Marluxia losing his memories as well, the connections to both Ventus through Sora and Castle Oblivion, and with Marluxia and Lorium's previous experience as a dandelion, it becomes clear why somebody would have chosen him as the head of Castle Oblivion. The question now becomes, who exactly did select him? For this, let's take a look back at the character file. Let's rewind it back to that first quote. I, with no memories, became Lord of Castle Oblivion. I wonder if someone planned that, but who? Well, at this point, I suppose it doesn't matter. So obviously this quote doesn't give us anything to go on, whether it's going to be the Master of Masters or Xehanort, but what it does show us is that Marluxia and Lorium already have a suspicion that this was something that was planned, that he was selected. However, he concludes that at the end of the day, that doesn't matter. Had he had his memories, I'm sure he would have felt differently. But let's move on to the next quote. Perhaps my heart was my guiding key. 
Now again, this one is vague and doesn't necessarily allude to either one, as both the Master of Masters and Master Xehanort have been shown to use this phrase, but this quote most early dates back to the Master of Masters use of it. As of right now, nobody has canonically used this phrase earlier than the Master of Masters. So to me, that whole phrase to me is more closely associated with the Master than it is Xehanort. Now let's move on to that final quote. If there were someone who could see everything in this world, maybe this was even the future they would have predicted. But I could never accept a future like that. I didn't accept a future like that. Maybe that's why I became a nobody. Or maybe no. So to me, I actually think this is the one that shines the most light on this. If there were someone who could see everything in this world, which, by the way, that could apply to both the Master of Masters and Xehanort. Master of Masters by way of having the Book of Prophecies and writing it, as well as the Gazing Eye, and Master Xehanort with his ability to time travel. However, where it tips me off is, maybe this was even the future they would have predicted. When I think about predicting the future and trying to gauge what's going to happen, that to me is so much more closely associated with the Master than it is Xehanort. So much of the Master's plan is about seeing everything in the world and predicting the future or trying to figure out what is to come. Now the second half of the quote also I believe builds the case for the Master. Check it out. But I could never accept a future like that. I didn't accept a future like that. So this is very odd to me, right? Because we have a Marluxia who doesn't have his memories, yet he seems to have this notion that he defied fate at some point, or that he would never accept a future that this supposed figure would have predicted. But right here, within the context of this very quote, he's in a sense calling back to Daybreak Town. That's at least the way I'm reading it. If any of you want to drop in the comments below and correct me on that, be my guest. But it seems to me right here, he's calling back to the Age of Fairy Tales. He's calling back to his time as a dandelion. He's calling back to Daybreak Town, which is where the Master of Masters set all of this in motion. So to me, when you kind of take the second half of this quote and kind of put it with the first half, it seems to me to allude more to the Master of Masters. However, with that said, it really could go either way. Although, with the way the Lost Master arc is playing out, which Terlizia and Quadratum, and the Master pulling strings, and this, and this incoming reunion among a number of the Dandelions, I have to believe that a lot of what Marluxia slash Lorium is referencing here in this character file is more likely to date back to Master of Masters as opposed to Xehanort. But again, I would love to hear your thoughts on it. So just to recap us before we close it out, Marluxia was chosen as the head of Castle Oblivion due to the thematic overlap of memory, his connections to Ventus through Sora and Castle Oblivion, and his previous experience in a leadership role as a dandelion. Now to me, again, when you string that together, it seems to me like it's almost like the Master of Masters is playing a joke. He knows who Lorium is, he knows he's a dandelion, he knows he's connected to Ventus, he knows Ventus is the one that essentially second-handedly struck down Strelitzia. So to put him at the head of Castle Oblivion, where memories get stripped away after his memories got stripped away, where his fellow dandelion connected to Strelitzia is being hidden, I mean, it all kind of seems like the Master's playing a sick joke here. But anyway, I would love to hear what you all think. That's all I'm gonna have for today. I love talking about a lot of these organization members and some of the ones that I think are going to be important in the future. Marluxia Elorium is one of them, so I'm glad we got to talk about him today. But let me know what you all think of him. Be sure to drop into the comments below, like the video to boost the almighty algorithm, subscribe to the channel for more gaming and RPG content. All of you sickos and normies out there, be good to yourselves and each other, and I will see all of you beautiful sickos and normies next time.